Before AI and AI agents, we were really used to deterministic code. We know what the output is when we give it certain input, but that's not the case anymore. It is dangerous because then we're going to make decisions about a product or a feature or even our just day-to-day -day workflow that are based on this one isolated example. Mm. That is just an anecdote. So it's very important for us to work with evals that actually statistically measure mm. how well we're doing on a population. And there are, of course, many different things that affect that number um, or, or that eval score. One of which is the model itself, the underlying model, how good the, the LLM is at being able to perform that task. But of course, there are a bunch of other things, um, such as the prompt you use, the context you provide and things like that, that, you know, that give the LLM a better chance of success. What, um, we'll jump into that in a little bit more depth. In terms of the eval, what is the what are, what are your eval suites look like for this for, for this report that we that we released? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So, what we did was we um, generated a data set, an evaluation data set yep. that consists of pairs of a question, a coding question, mm -hmm. and uh, a criteria for evaluation. Mm. But these questions, they're not just they don't come from thin air. Mm. We actually take a, an existing library, open source library. And we use an agent to analyze this library and then generate the question based on the real API of this library, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. both the question and the evaluation criteria. Um, and we focus on questions um, that have to do with the, so the coding task, the nature of the coding task is that it tries to evaluate someone's, a person's or, or an agent's ability to use a library efficiently mm -hmm. and correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so it's less, you know, the typical coding tasks that agents are used to are sort of like lead code style, you know, uh, gener like um, uh, implement from scratch, something like bread for search or uh, that sort of task. This is not it. This is more of a, oh, you have... Pydantic, yeah. Pydantic Python library. Um, now use Pydantic to generate that sort of class with that sort of validation. You know, um, so it's it's more about it's more focused on using the library. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the data set. Yeah. And then we, um, in order to evaluate a method, we ask it to solve the question, mm -hmm. and then separately. We use an agent as a judge mm -hmm. to uh, evaluate the solution based on the criteria that we previously generated. Right, right. Okay. So, and the criteria is all about how the API was used. Gotcha. So, so your tests are twofold, and your tests are essentially this is the challenge, and then this is what I expect. This is how your criteria is. This is how I expect a correct solution to kind of like you know. It needs to use this library. It needs to use this method on the library, perhaps. It needs to pass this information, and we need to be able to see this kind of outcome. So it still allows the, the LLM to be creative in whatever ways it wants to Absolutely. code it, but it needs to hit those several things, which, yeah. pardon me, it needs to hit those several things which, um, which, which require that correct use of the library. Um, okay, what, what are the, so when things go good, they go good, you get a pass. When things go bad, what are the kind of things that we're looking for? I can I can already guess things like, you know, that hallucination of the API that doesn't exist, maybe very often because it's actually picking the wrong version of the API. Is, is that a common thing? What, yeah. what, what are the things that we look for when, in failures? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what you've mentioned with the versions happens, uh, for sure. Uh, Pydantic, actually, yeah. that I mentioned already is a good example of this because uh, Pydantic version 2 is quite different to Pydantic version version 1 and LLMs often confuse it. Mm -hmm. um, but also we have, I think there is a more fundamental problem, which is uh, new or or private libraries, right? Yeah. Things that might not be in the training, in the pre-training data mm. of uh, the LLM. So mm. there is no pre-existing knowledge about this. Mm. Um, and now suddenly you're asked to use this library, but you don't know anything about it. So the, if it's an agent, so if it's, if it's an LLM, it's just going to hallucinate. Mm. If it's an agent, it might do web search, it might read documentation and so on, but this is quite expensive, quite a lengthy process, and it might not find what it needs because some libraries are not that well documented. Yeah. 
So niche libraries, not well-known libraries, libraries that have a smaller community, maybe an academic community behind them, you know, th things like this, they're going to be overlooked. Yeah. And not to mention private libraries where there is no pre-existing knowledge yeah. and you might not be able to access that much knowledge about yeah. them.